Hey guys, today we will talk about the top 5 cards that were not reprinted in Modern and that are currently spiking in price. Now, a lot of Modern is going to be cheaper, but that doesn't mean all the cards are going to go down. Cards that are not reprinted but are in high demand will go up in price, and these 5 are victims, if you will, of buyouts. Now, it's not a grave I wouldn't be gravely concerned about this. Eventually, I believe all five of these cards will be reprinted. Some of them actually have been. So let's start with Rest in Peace. This card has been spiking very hard, given the fact that Stony Silence, Blood Moon, as well as Graph Digger's Cage, all of these premier $10 plus sideboard cards have been reprinted. Rest in Peace was not reprinted, and it has just spiked in price from the original RTR price of a dollar to the now new price of seven dollar. Foil copies are incredibly rare and incredibly expensive. Now that being said, RTR is a box set where you can still get a unopened box for eighty dollars. So I don't expect this one to break the bank, given that it's a rare and a set which is still only eighty bucks sealed. Next, Karn Liberated. This one is slightly different. Karn Liberated is a $70 card. This is the Modern Masters 2015 edition of him. So it's pretty recent. It's less than two years ago. Uh, in summer of 2015, this card was reprinted and it went down in price uh, all the way up, all the way down to $33 before spiking up double. Now this one's a little more interesting because it's harder to reprint him again uh, given the fact that he was reprinted once already but I do feel like he could show up in a supplemental product of some type maybe a From the Vault. Uh, he is a very popular character in Magic and I, I like him a ton. I would love to see him reprinted in a mass quantity of some type but normally when we're talking about standard uh, they don't reprint Planeswalkers, unless it's a core set. And he would be a perfect fit should we have a core set. And there are rumors that we will eventually have a core set in 2017 or 2018, maybe both. So overall, I love the fact that he is colorless because that's what makes him playable in ED8s and so many different decks. Tron is a deck in Modern. It's got a little weaker, but still a duck deck nonetheless and none of its pieces got hit very hard, as I will show you soon. Fuminator Mage. Now this one is a little bit surprising. His price is all over the place. We're looking at the original Shadowmore version, but the Modern Masters 2015 version has also spiked. Another interesting trend to note is a lot of cards in Modern Masters 2015, although it wasn't that long ago, it's probably I want to say six months, nine months, like less than two years ago, uh, this was reprinted and there was a lot of them. You can get boxes online for $240, $250. Uh, when I bought a box for my subscriber, it was $220 at the time and that wasn't that long ago uh, when we opened a box at $220 from a retail price. So this mage is now $40. It's definitely one of the premier cards you want to pull from the set. Uh, land Destruction has always been very good, and this is the premier Land Destruction in Modern. So, something else to keep note of is Modern Masters 2015, and whether or not the prices of those cards will go up um, drastically due to them being older. I mean, it makes kind of like... It, the definition of old to me is like five to seven years out, then that's when you typically see prices go up. Like Innistrad, New Frexia, I, that's kind of all old. Scars of Meriden, you're seeing spikes. But for Modern Master 2015 to see spikes, I 100% believe it's artificial. Totally artificial. Artificial. Anyway, the next card we're going to look at is this card from Champions. Probably the most valuable card in Champions. I'd, someone correct me if that's not right. I started at $4 just as a... Fun ED8 type of card, and now it's seeing modern play. Uh, decks have gotten slower, so you can combo off. Um, obviously, you have the Gorilla uh, Spirit Guide, Simeon Spirit Guide, to accelerate this slightly. 
But overall, a very strong card. You definitely want to get your big fatties out on the field, take advantage of them, and just that's probably enough to put you ahead to win the game. A very good in tempo, very good in controly type of builds. I've seen it in a blue red control build, which my friend plays a lot of, where he just counters stuff and he tries to combo off of this piece. Uh, definitely another card to look out for because uh, any type of card that puts creatures in play, that's extremely valuable in modern, as you can see from Goro's Vengeance. They haven't really hit the champions cards, which is kind of strange, but I think. Overall, we know we're not going back to Kamigawa. They have been very, um, they have been very upfront about the fact that we're not going back to this set. So this might be a little bit. It might be good enough. Now, one of the cards and the card I want to most talk about in detail is this one. So most of the uncommons and commons got hit pretty hard, but this did not get hit. So what happens to a ten cent card that does not get hit? Well. As long as it survives reprint after reprint after reprint attempt, it will go up to six dollars as a on, as a common. So it's very intriguing to me. Uh, obviously, Might of Corrosos was a ten dollar, Inquisition was ten dollars, and Path has always been ten dollars. No matter how many times they seem to reprint it, it's always been ten dollars. Now, one of the crazy things about this it is a common. And if it was reprinted as a common, its price would probably be sub one dollar easily. Easily. So when you're seeing the prices go up, you're seeing the prices go up of sideboard cards, Tron cards, and specific decks. Uh, decks that did not get hit this time around, like Affinity, Tron. The pieces have gone up, uh, as opposed to which is kind of the reverse of what I expected to happen. So if they hit. And Jund, Jund not being that great, but still, if they hit Lily and they hit Goyf and they hit various pieces of Jund, they hit Jund very hard. Inquisition, then I would expect other pieces of Jund to go up in price. Maybe like Dark Confidant, although it's not played as a four of or it's not played in every single deck. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is specific decks that got hit or did not get hit as hard, they are going up in price. And that's an interesting trend. That I did not see coming. I would have expected it to be the opposite, where decks like got hit with cards that were not hit would go up a lot, but it's decks that didn't get hit, and the general deck is going up in price. So anyway, leave me a comment below if you can figure out why that is the case. Anyway, bye guys.